Oh my god, all right, come on over here, come on over here, get in here. All right, guys, what's going on? Justin Kelly, of course, the one and only Vanessa Cade coming Hello. at you here. It's officially Gizmo, she's got the tie, because Gizmo's working today. Yeah, Chad, this is Gizmo, it's not a monkey. I don't like monkeys, this is Gizmo. Not at all. Yes, we can hear you, Deb Swift in the house, all the usual crushers in the house, you guys are amazing. So once again, welcome, now that you can hear us, to America's Card Room, The Page. We are here to hang out and have an absolute blast with everyone today. We've already started off with some crazy action. We have some great table audio for you. But talk to me, what is The Cage? The Cage, you guys, if you have not seen it before, Six. this is the sixth Cage that they have had so far in almost uh, one year of Cage events. It is a combination of a tournament and a cash game with a $5,000 buy-in. And what you see is Four. players start with $5,000 in chips. So they actually start with uh, each chip having their actual correct yeah. monetary value. Um, it goes for two days. Uh, so uh, we usually, there's no like official winner at the end. However, uh, whoever's left, whatever you're left with at the end of day two is what you get to take home. So it's like a cash game that you can't leave for two days, hence the name The Cage. <laughs> I bet you do. Oh, four bet to seven and a quarter. Oh Unfortunately, he picked oh, no. a very rough time to pull that off. Yeah, this one's going to hurt a little bit. Unless Jeff opts to flat and Jonathan flops the crap out of the board. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, think Bose, or I don't think Gross is going anywhere here. It's a pretty sizable four bet, and he's not buying it. I like that we're seeing some bluffy four bets in here. Yeah. Wow, ten five six, couple Oof. hearts on board. If you're eight six, it, it looks like a pretty good board for you. Mm -hmm. Like a pretty pretty dry board. This could actually hurt pretty bad, this one. Yeah, this is not only especially if a club peels the turn or something. I mean any sort of seven nine of clubs, it gives you a straight yeah. draw flush combo on the turn. Could get nasty. And I mean you'll obviously love this flop if you're gross with jacks. But you are kind of always cognizant of your opponent could have queens plus. Yep. Also, a lot of dangerous cards for Jags can still come out as well. And Jonathan first to act here. Pot's at 1.5K. <coughs> Lieb, my man. Yes, I'm ready for TPF, buddy. I'll see you out there in March. He bets 290 here with the 8-6 and gets called. Oh, that's the exact card I was talking about. Ooh. Look at the world of opportunities. Oh it's almost 50-50 now, it's equity. It's basically flipping on this turn card with the flush draw and the straight draw and the pair now. That's a really sick card. I know. That was like... <laughs> the ultimate just like agonizing sweat card right here. Oh, all in and a snap. Wait, wait. Yeah, all in, all in. Wow, flipping for stacks. Flipping for a 10K pot. Oh! oh A6 gets there. And it's the jack. That's, oh. like, that's the biggest burn. Oh. Set on the river for Jeff, but it's no good. Oh, wow. Oof. Oh, what a, what a dirty river. <laughs> wow. That pot escalated to levels I did not think we were going to get to. No. Wow. Woo. Brutal. It's like it's going to get... Oh, Jeff Gross is going to come along here with 10 at 5 off from the big blind. Wow, queen 5-7, all spades peels down. Top pair for Felix. We have bottom pair for Jeff Gross, but he does have a bit of a spade backup. Pretty close to a flip at this point. 60-40 anyway. And Gross checks over to Felix. I believe we reach for some chips. That's 130. And looks like Gross is going to make the call. Three on the turn here. Advantage definitely going to Felix at this point here with just one card to come. That's 300. Jeff, a non-believer coming along. And King Ball here on the river is going to give Felix the check mark with a pair of queens. 
also not the best card. Like, if somebody was basically calling along on a high uh, spade draw, a decent amount of those hands will have hit the king. It's yeah. not quite as bad as an ace in the river, but king is still not your favorite card there. Yeah, and I gotta wonder, if, if you're Jeff in this spot, Felix with queen jack, is there a right price you can find to essentially bet here in the river and blow Felix off his hand? I don't, I don't know. I don't... I mean, he would pretty much have to put He'd you on exactly to... what you said, the king of spades, yeah, right? Yeah, You know? So Felix bets five and a quarter. <laughs> Not looking good. Lesson. You got this, man. Never too much bacon. Always a pleasure to see you, my man. Hey, how's it going, never too much bacon? I think Jeff considering a call here. He has cut out calling chips. And if you're Jeff, you could be thinking about it the other way as well, right? Like if he was basically uh, betting down with uh, the ace of spades, of spades yeah. it will have missed, and uh, you might find a hero call here, thinking that Jack's uh, going to have a lot of flush draws in his range. Yeah, and I mean, or not, he did raise pre, right? Felix raised pre up to 55, so. Mm -hmm. Even if he has the ace of spades, you gotta imagine he has something with it too that could connect. But Jeff makes the call. I remember. I don't remember. I think uh, two pairs ace and jack. Yes. All right. So again, battle of the Jeffs here. Look at this. We got a raise and then a three bet by Boski with queen ten from the big. Gross is gonna make the call. Jeff on Jeff violence here. Four eight nine. <laughs> <laughs> Four eight nine. Jeff Gross currently in the lead with threes, but Boski with two overs and a straight draw. And the Terminator sunglasses. If you're Boski, um, actually if you're either of them, this probably looks like a pretty dry board. JJS, you aren't married, are you, Fatry? No, I'm not, but if I was, I'd probably just have slightly less pinball machines. But still, <laughs> but still a lot, but still a lot. I have 23, anyways. 23? Holy crap. Whoops. Do you still have uh, Big Tony's poker? It's, it's my favorite. You cannot get rid of that. It's for sale, but I have it. No, it's not for sale. Okay. It's not for sale. Apparently, we're shipping it to Canada. <laughs> Never mind. You didn't hear that. Okay, good talk. Big Tony's poker card. It's ridiculous. It's like basically this uh, video poker game, and he totally cheats, so it's hilarious. <laughs> so, it's, so it's a blast. <laughs> All right, so it does go bet by Boski on the flop, called by Gross. And now, again on the turn... I believe Boski fired a healthy bet of 900, applying max pressure here to Gross. And that board pair, again, we were talking about that with those low pairs, it's just so rough. Because even if you're ahead, right, any 8 or 9 also kills you. He does let it go there. He's gonna take it down with the draw. See the problem there being in Jeff's spot, right? Is it's got the way he's got 3,400, 900 call is, is borderline basically starting to commit yourself, and it's like Eve, you you might be right, and even if you right. are right, it's just it's still. I mean, and that's exactly what happened to him earlier. You were totally right with Jax, but the guy just had too many odds to crush and right. got there. So Sasa makes it 125 to go here on the button with Ace Jack, Boski, solid hand here with King Queen. Oh. oh. Yeah, there we go. I was like, the three bet, knew it was coming, up to 400. And Sasa makes the call in position here with Ace Jack. We're going to see a flop pot is healthy at 850. All hearts queen Ooh, high. Uh, there, danger. There danger will board. be blood. Second nut flush draw and top pair versus nut flush draw. Almost a flip here for these two players. Boski bets on 225 here, and a snap call it looks like here from Sasa. Now, let me ask you this. If you're Boski and you bet that, and someone snap calls in position like that, would you put them on pretty it's, much like the one the one heart draw? Yeah, yeah, usually. Okay. I mean, even if it's another queen, you have the best, or almost the best queen. And he's going to fire 500 now. So at this point, if you think you're up against like a really high flush draw in this case... And it pretty much has to be the ace of hearts, considering Boski has the king of hearts here. You're gonna want to like, gonna want to fire as much as possible to get the value off the draw. Sebs are 82. That is the one and only Vanessa Cade doing the commentary. 
Thanks for joining us. Hey, Subzer, how's it going? And Sasa, well, look at this. Sasa ships. Maximum Ooh, pressure that applied. That is a massive ship. Now, look at this. Boski takes off the glasses and look at those glances. He's staring into his soul. This is this is an incredible ship. Holy. Wow. Wow. And and Boski can't believe it. He's like, really? Because the turn is irrelevant. Nobody cares about the three, right? right. So that's why Boski, there's just some alarms going off. The wheels are turning. We're going to see what happens here. I mean, he can easily talk himself into believing this is two pair or a set of some sort. Or maybe even, I mean, because Sasa called a healthy three bet pre. Boski three bet to 400, right? So I, I don't even want to say like just two random connected hearts. It was a pretty strong three bet pre flop. And Boski doing a quick little size up of his own stack. See, it's really easy for us when we're watching to be like, oh, I have 6.1K and he has 3.2K. But, you know, when you got plaques and different colored chips, you take a moment and know exactly where you're at and where your opponent's at. Especially with the king of hearts here, this would be like a really hard hand to lay down. Because you got to think, even if he is on two pair or a set, you do have some outs. And, right. and otherwise, it's just like this over bet is like usually nutted in a lot of games, but not, not at the cage. <laughs> not at the cage. Welcome to it. There's such a huge overbet too. This is a really interesting spot. Really tough spot. Looks like Boski may be talking though. Let's see. He's thinking. in the tank. I don't blame him. Yeah, absolutely. This is a really hard spot. No, I mean, it's, it's for your life. It's for your, it's for your tournament life. It's a $5,000 bet. It's rough. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Uh, Kellogg points out, dude is swaying in his seat there. Gotta find a call. <laughs> I mean, you can see him right there swaying in the corner. Yeah. Actually, I think uh, I think they say like the the live tell books will usually tell you that if somebody is bluffing and nervous that they'll just sit like extra still. Mm -hmm. So it could be a mis uh, misleading live tell there. And he does make the fold. I, I mean, I think it's going to be the, the correct fold. I mean, it's quite possible. Maybe he flopped a flush, right? He's behind all the two pairs, all of the set. And it's a very confusing bet. It's hard to make out which like hand would reasonably do that. So mm -hmm. I think I think for your tournament life and like five thousand, it's a totally reasonable lay down. Well, and you have to wonder what he called Boski's three bet with pre to four hundred. Right. Now he does have the ace of hearts. Obviously, Boski knows he doesn't have the ace of hearts like himself, right? So it's Sasa. What Sasa could easily have ace jack of hearts. Sure. Right. And he or, doesn't, or but he could. Or any of those pocket pair. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Ace X of hearts. Yeah, it's just, it's for you. Oh, that's rough. Man, wow. Maximum pressure applied and gets it through. And that's what I notice a lot, too, over these cages is having these six max tables, especially as we go into day two and these blinds start increasing rapidly, you get a, it's almost always like a battle of the button versus the blinds or blind versus blind. Yeah. Because everybody just starts snugging up and it's only six max yeah. and, you know, things, the dynamics change. You'll, you'll see the dynamics change over the next two days very rapidly. Those early position opens just get so many full, like get through so much of the time in these six max games. It's, yeah, like he's saying later on, especially. Ace, queen under the gun here for Sasa. Sevens for Felix in the cutoff, and 10 3 come along for the ride in the big blind. Lots of sevens for Felix. All the sevens. Yeah, everybody uh, has a little bit of something here. Sasa with the gutter and an over. Seven for Felix and Jeff with middle pair. And it does go check over to Felix here. Pretty dry-ish board, right? I mean, we don't really have a lot of strength. I mean, I guess Jack Queen, 8 9, right? But other than that, we don't have any flush draws here. That's 250. Sasa's going to find a call here. Sasa looking for a Jack. You can see that one of those Jacks is grayed out because it was in another player's holding pre flop. Now, this is a card that's going to keep Sasa in this yeah. pot. So Sasa turns top pair along with the straight draw now. Each player pretty deep here in this case. Yeah, pot's <clears throat> just shy of a thousand, just over nine hundred here. And it looks like Felix.
Caleb goes for another bet. Let's see what he prices it at. He fires 250 on the flop, makes it 475 here. It's always a scary board texture when you have ace queen or ace jack on something like ace king 10, right? Because you have outs, you have a straight draw with your top pair, but there's just so many hand combos that you don't want to see turn up. Mm -hmm. So Sasa does make the call. The river's a brick. Felix's set is good. He's thinking, how do I get max value here? Pot's just shy of two grand. Ace queen decides to check. You think Sasa might be in check call mode? I really think it depends on what Felix bets here. I, th I think it's going to be a check call. I think it's going to be hard for him to fold unless he like makes a ridiculous overbet. I think he could bet pretty close to pot and still get called here. Maybe like two thirds pot, three quarters. Let's see, that gold plaque that just went in there is a 1K plaque, guys. Those blue plaques are 500. So he does bet almost pot, actually. It was 1.9, I think, was yeah. in there. T Dog in the house. Always good to see you, man. Yeah, 1.4, and I think we're stacking a call. We sure do. And he's going to see the bad news. You yeah. see, before he even looked up, you, you can hear the guy verbally say, I got a set. And he's just like, crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> damn it. I like the so, bet size there. I think he got pretty close to max value. I think he was all about that max value life. Plus 2.4K for Felix there. Almost a 5K pot. Oof, it's almost a starting stack size pot right there. Everyone who's running the simulation. Duh. Three bet to six fifty by Thomas. Welcome back, three bet Tom. I've <laughs> missed you. I've here. missed you so much. I'm still actually flipping with the fours, despite the five. I think Felix will find a fold. I imagine so. I think with that stack, that probably. Uh, I don't see cams on the rail or yeah, no, we definitely use RFID cards here guys That means every card has a little wafer thin chip in front of it and those square panels in front of each player Are able to pick up that information and then relay Ooh. it back to us. Oh, he is gonna he find the call. call Set mine in Well, they definitely make RFID cards They're About a hundred bucks a deck ish <laughs> Okay, 11 million a deck. Not a bad flop for the fours, actually, but the fives do pick up the pair, giving Thomas the lead here. Yeah, but if, yeah, exactly. But if you're Felix, you're like, I'm definitely going to peel one. Yeah, well, you're, you're thinking, like, this board has got to be a brick city for Thomas three betting there, and you have the open-ended draw. So this is, this might be, this might be bloody here. Yeah, they're definitely RFID cards, Bacon, for sure. So get your happy butt down here to the cage, my man. Yeah, Faded Spade also started making some pretty sweet RFID cards. I know they're used in the Run It Up series. Yes. I think, and I think... And the WSOP actually, too. Oh, nice. I think cool. so. Yeah, or, yeah it, was, it was another one. I wanted to say, was it HP? No. I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, they're, they're, they're really sweet. I have a, a four-color deck of theirs at home, which is a lot of fun. Whoa! I wouldn't be surprised to see either call or an all-in from all Felix. He does in. opt to shove. It does kind of put Thomas in an awkward spot here. Oh, you can see it on his face. He's like, what? Huh? It's hard to specifically put Felix on fours, especially with the call on the three bet preflop. So this is like really looking at this point like it's got to be an over pair or a six at least, you would think. Maybe ace four 45. suited. <clears throat> you're thinking yeah, if you're time. Thomas, it's hard to put him on a, a yeah, hard good. to put Felix on a hand that does not beat his five. <coughs> the preflop action here. This is gnarly. I mean, even if you even if you just make the call here, I mean, you're not out of the woods. I mean, you still no, have to sure you not. still have to dodge eight outs. Well, it should normally be ten. Yeah, I forgot my matching socks. Also, KY, sorry, bud. I feel like you know if he's got like if Felix has an overpair here and he like open call the three bet, he could easily have like all, like all of the overpairs basically. Interesting. I mean, if that six was a diamond, it's a snap call from Tom. <laughs> but in this case, it's just like, ugh. Tom really would have liked to see a turn there, and then he could have, mm -hmm. and then he could have a whole lot more fun with this hand. But on the flop, that's just really tough. 
interesting to see what he does here. I think he might find a pull, but... Well, considering he already bet 800. And he, is, he is cutting out chips. He's only got 8... I mean, he already bet 800. The guy has 3.7, so it's it's basically, let's just round and say 3k to call. You got 13.7. But you have to you have to be able to put him on a hand that you can beat. Of course. And it's really hard to put Felix on a 4 after he calls a 3-bet preflop for about 10% of his stack. If you guys... That's about the only thing he beats here. I mean, he's not really jamming with a, with a three, and he won't have too many hands that have a three uh, that aren't pocket threes, basically, that would also call preflop. Is it called the no, is it no rat hole on the on ACR? Is it no rat hole? Is that I what think it is? so, yeah. The no rat hole. I was going to say, if you wanted to play with Tom yourself, you can find him pretty much around the no rat hole tables. He's always the guy sitting there with tons of chips just, like, waiting for somebody else to hop in the game. <laughs> Exactly, Days Boy. Yeah, that is the structure of the cage. It's essentially a cash game freeze out with a tournament esque structure where there's no escaping the cage, man. You either make it to the end or you don't. It'd be so much easier here for Thomas to justify a call if, if there was, like, you know, a second club on board or, like, anything where he could put him on something else other than an overpair or specifically pocket fours. Yeah, right? Because a flush draw like, could easily do that. You're 100% you're correct. He right. does call. Oh, he wow. makes the call. Now, this, would, I know he's going to hop in the booth later, and we're all going to talk to him about this hand yeah. and what was going through his head. So, it looks like the pot is just about 9K. This could be, this is huge for this either player. This is a player. huge hand. Either player. This will put Thomas close to 20K or over 20K if he gets it. He has to basically be able to specifically Diamond on the turn, on the pull some outs, and, and he a five gets on it. the river. He's just super good. Good all day there. And I mean, and, and, and the turn starts just yanking outs away from Felix here. So Felix's buildup was just apparently stacking some chips, waiting for Tom. That was a tough call. It was a good call. Yeah. Yeah, but not Brent. There was a free roll earlier today. Uh, I believe registration has long since passed for that. But there will be another free roll tomorrow. It's an even bigger prize pool. $500 free roll. Go in, win all the monies. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. There's a half an hour of late reg. So make sure you drop by the stream here and get the password so you can play that. Keep the stream open even while you're playing, because if we get up to 1,000 viewers at any point today or tomorrow, they have authorized us to give away an $8,000 cage package. So that is definitely our goal for the next couple of days. Oh, they authorized us? I was just going to do it and see what happened. <laughs> I was just like, whatever, you can't say no now. We it's a good life strategy. I should have used that more, I feel like. We pinky sweared and everything. Like, you can't... <laughs> it's over. It's basically legally binding. Look at this flop. About as good of a flop as you could ask for with 9-3 of hearts. Flops open-ended and a flush draw. Up against Mystery Hand here from Canada. Well, I don't care what Mystery Hand has. I'll take Tom's hand. <laughs> I'm in. I'm totally in. Can you give me some chips? 5k. Fair enough, right? You want to profit, I want to profit. <laughs> So here's the deal, never too much bacon. The fun thing about RFID cards, and while they're always different, is because you have to pair them it's each pair time. Pair. So just because it's like, not to get too specific, but I feel ya, they're not as exploitable as you would think. Like not even close. I'm three hitting a top pair on the turn now for an open-ended draw, the flush draw, plus top pair. Life's Five good pair. for Tom right now. I'm gonna go. And he jams an effective 5.4k bet here into a 3k pot, I believe it was. God, and like the turn is so great, right? You're like, oh, cool, give me a pair too, just for fun. Top pair. Ah, uh, not Brand. It says, Tom seems to run like Possel. And if you guys have ever watched Stones Live out of Sacramento, California, another show that I host out there, there's a guy on there named Mike Possel who basically, I mean, that guy could hit water if he fell out of the middle of the desert, man. I mean, he just <laughs> he's just great. Everything he ever wants, he gets. I mean, the guy has two outer he gets there. It's just disgusting. And so, yeah, Tom runs like Possel is 
It's pretty much one of the nicest compliments you could get. Looks like, we don't know what the cards are here for Joe, but it looks like a tough spot. Maybe something like ace five here. He is playing from under the gun. We have seen some pretty wide under the gun opens here. Oh, cool. He's got. Uh, We're told yeah. he has uh, he has jacks here for Joe. Even with jacks, it would be. Uh, he does make the call here. Big draw. There's nine and three still drawing very live with all of the flush cards, the straight cards, and uh, cards that'll make two pair. It does brick out, and Jax will hold and get the double there for uh, 13.8k. It looks like Joe's gonna end up with there. Really, just 11s, I guess. <laughs> well played. Well played. Hello, Rain Clown. How's it going? Good to see you. Happy New Year. <clears throat> wow. Much needed pot for Joe and a pretty solid hit for Tom there. That levels the playing field quite a lot. Tom is going to have a more difficult time running this table over now that Joe's got almost as much as he does. All right, Drunken Donk has a great strategy here. It says someone log into 830 of their alternate accounts <laughs> so we can get that 8K package going on. Let's make it happen. I mean, we're not telling you to do that, but we're right. also not not telling you to do that. So, you know. I like we're out of here. Three Bet Tom does exactly that. Three Bet's up to six and a quarter with Jack Nine after Troy makes it 125 with fours, but runs it right into good old aces Man, for Canada. Man, we have had uh, a couple of tame hands here, but all of a sudden we've got the Ace King suit. We got some aces. This one's going to be pretty action-y, I feel like. And let's kick it up. That'll be a raise to uh, at, at least over 1,500. It depends on if you said an amount out loud there. No, yeah, 2K for sure. 2K to call. If you're Raymond, that's just about your whole stack here, so we could end up with an all-in pre-flop aces versus ace king suited. Just your friendly 2040, 125, 625, 2K game. <laughs> it's like your friendly neighborhood game here, guys. Tough spot for Raymond, definitely basically his tournament life. Yeah, and and ooh, we get an all-in with the AK here. Yeah, absolutely. Good old raise three bet, four bet ship. And this is obviously going to be a quick snap call tabling and Raymond's going to see the bad news that he has a lot of catching up to do. GSH Malone asking if I'm a deer or a cow. Uh, it depends on the day, but actually the costume is gizmo. And they're running it. And uh, yeah, aces are way good, plus they have the ace of hearts all the way. He just puts it out there. <laughs> He's like, how oh, check this like, out. Let me just slide my ace sure over. Make sure you saw that. No, I don't just have the, the better pair. I've actually got the flush. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I love Ghost clipping out. Canadian versus Canadian non-violence for Joe and Troy. <laughs> JFK Poker TD, the poker boss, is playing. You can actually check out ACR's Twitter feed. At our most recent update we have as far as chips at the beginning of this section, which was about an hour ago-ish, maybe a little over an hour, he had, let's see, he was actually fifth in chips at seven, about 7.8K, or three big dogs all at this table. We're around 18K, 14K, and 14K. You can see those stacks have shifted a little bit, but they're all pretty much here. All the money's on this table. In fact, there's some really great content, by the way, on, on, like I said, they have an amazing video production crew here. So I highly encourage you, even if you don't use Twitter, you don't even need to log in. I mean, if you have one, that's great, give them a follow, but if not, go check out ACR underscore poker. I mean, these videos, they're cranking out these videos like every hour, and they're really, really good I can't really believe like, how, like, literally they're filming stuff 
like at the start of day one, and it's on Twitter like within an hour. Yeah, it's super and solid. the and the quality of the video is like really impressive. Yeah. So Joe finds a check here. Felix bets five and a quarter with the nut flush draw. Mm. And this is not the worst board for Joe. He does have a pair and a straight draw, potential backdoor diamonds. And Joe reaching for some chips. Shout out, by the way, to uh, all our regs in the chat. We've dropped a lot of you guys earlier saying what up, but NL Tony TD, I know you were here earlier and rejoined us. Rain Clown, you've been here pretty much like the whole time. I bluff you not, good seeing you as well. Obviously, JFK Poker TD, not Brant. All the cool kids, we love you all. You yes. guys are awesome. Hello, hello. How's it going, Tony? And a raise to 1,400. He says, let's do this, Felix. Let's see what's up. Well, maybe a raise to 1,500 there. And Felix stacking out a call. Board pairs on the turn with a seven of diamonds, but also opens up that crazy backdoor diamond draw we were talking about mm -hmm. for Joe. Still pair of fives, the best hand currently. And the board pair is interesting because it's like, even if you don't like it, you can also use it and exploit it. Yes. To put pressure on your I opponent. I mean, either of them could use that seven. Well, and that's the thing is, so let's talk about Joe's hand, right? It's a pair and a straight draw. There's no reason why he also couldn't have seven, six, or seven, eight. Yeah, so why do people wear sunglasses at the poker table? A variety of reasons. Uh, sometimes it makes people just feel more comfortable. Uh, sometimes it's so you can't see their eyes. Sometimes it's so you can't see, essentially, like, it's awkward to just stare at somebody's face. <laughs> I'm going to stare at your eyes when I'm facing a big bet. So it kind of gives them that extra bit of shield or protection so they can just be like, you know what, I'm just going to stare at this guy when I'm looking over here, but I can look sideways just because I want to get the information, but I also don't want to be that super weird creeper who just goes like this. It's definitely like the main reason when I played live a lot, I definitely wore sunglasses a lot. And like, I think when you're starting out in poker, people usually think it's to like hide your expression or something, but it's more like, if you're more, if you're like, let's say you're in a three-way pot or something and you're more concerned about one player than another, you're more likely to look at the player that you're concerned about calling you or, or whatever. So it's better for you as a player for them to not necessarily see who you're looking at the most. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely one of the main reasons. And look at this turn. Joe puts max pressure on Felix. Bets 5K essentially putting Felix all in. And he says, no, thank you. So a healthy little 2K gain for Joe on that pot. Pretty high big for stack pretty high. pays off here. So she sends his rig back. I mean, what a sweet turn for him. He's like, yep. <laughs> Straight flush draw. Let's go. I'm in. The silhouettes, by the way, you can see there in the back are all around that entire cage room. You can see a better They're example of that. behind us here, too. Yeah, exactly. You can see a better example of that, too, like I said, in some of those Twitter videos. But yeah, it's really, it creates a cool atmosphere. It's a really cool atmosphere up there. Everybody's having a good time, and then you just have essentially all these like people watching you that aren't really there. <laughs> but it's good times. You still have a cage package. I know you won two. I can't remember if you played in them already. I played one, and I still have one in reserve. So I will play another one here. Sick some brag. <laughs> I played one. I have one in reserve. I'll probably have another one on layaway. It'll be like, it'll be here soon. I didn't cash the first one. So there you go. There's the opposite side but of you, the sick brag. Oh, man. But you're so positive from just the 1K spending cash envelopes. It's not even funny. I love it. Fair enough. Okay. True. So battle of the mediocre hearts here. <laughs> Guess what? Tom finds a three bet to 700. And now over to Troy. And you're right, Troy is really right now thinking, I'm tired of your shit, bro. Like, you've yeah. been doing this every time I come in the pot and I raise, you three bet me. I'm we've, telling you. We've all been there. Like, you've been playing at a table where it's just every time you raise, it's that one person three betting you. That's Tom. Yeah, I, I, he's been more patient than I would have been. I think that last one where it was ace seven versus ace five, I would have been four betting that. 
I've been like, enough of your shit, Tom. <laughs> just four just, back. Just, God damn it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> he hears that a lot, actually. <laughs> So he does check this flop here. Interesting flop. Tom does connect Tom with a pair. Tom gets the best of the flop again. <laughs> yeah, Tom connects oh with a pair. God. But Troy's got a couple of overs to his cards and a gutter. And if it comes, potentially backdoor <laughs> running hearts? Question mark. We'll see what happens. Sick bonus air miles right there. Ghost, Ghost is calling you out. I know, actually, I, I haven't been using like the my my points, and they like specifically told me this time make sure that you do it. So I'm gonna have to go back and get them to like add it. Oh, retro points. Yeah. Even more of a sick brag. Because it's like it's a long flight, so. So it looks like we are getting some plaques put in the pot here. Troy is going to bet. Looks like 500 some. Ooh, 1.6k. So that is a gold plaque and a blue plaque. Oh, and a snap call by Tom. Tom couldn't get in those plaques fast enough. And heart of the turn for the Alto Sweat. Not going to happen. Queen peels. Tom's got the best of it. But can he hold on? Because you know that Troy's going to apply pressure. Does he check behind? No. I was like, I don't think Troy ever checks that quick there. Such a sick move for Tom to fire here. Popping some rays or something. Oh, the cage swag looks so good. It's Battle of the Statues. Nobody move. We'll figure he out what we're going to bet. He's going to put in another bet here. I told you it was going to happen eventually. He's been getting he's been getting pushed around by Tom a fair bit. So at some point he has to do that. And he does take it down. Yeah, wow. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. He, he shows it. Wait, he you only showed one? Oh. I think so. He just showed and one. And look at the right. grin. Oh, look at that. Wow. That felt so it's good like, for Troy. That was complete like a, redemption it's for the Troy. the happiest bluff I think I've ever seen. Like, you've been abusing me all day. Take Ooh. that. <laughs> That's great. I mean, you know, I mean, I get it. I get it. You're just like, why do I feel like this guy's just steamrolling me every time? He and is, but he also actually has the best hand, even if it's like bottom pair. Every, and then, even the time he four bet him with a 5-4 off, he still flopped the best of it. Yeah, Troy's like, celebration <laughs> corona time. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, kill beer, why not? Yeah. All right, all right. Man, we've all uh, been right. there. Good I job, Canada. <laughs> we've all been there where you slap it down and you're like, Ugh, it's about time. <laughs> See the players starting to count up their chip stacks. So I think that might be the end. So those are the stacks at that table. And let me go ahead and give you updated chip counts all around the room. So pretty much the big dogs are at this table here, right? We do have Troy sitting on 22.8 final total for the day, followed by Thomas Canuli. Good old three-bet Tom here at just shy of 15K. We have Joe at the table at 17.5K, and Phil Nagy there at 6,300, Sean McCormick the Poker Boss at 7,100, and actually Jonathan Shirley, uh, the other big stack, at 14K. Everybody else uh, kind of mixed in anywhere between, you know, 1 to 10K. Our shortest stack is carry down there with 22 players remaining at 1,280 bucks. So we started the day with 27 players, and we're down to 22. This has been day one of The Cage. <laughs> and we really appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Justin Kelly. This is Vanessa Cade, and we will see all of you and a thousand friends tomorrow. That's right. Bring your friends so we can give you the AK package. Just help me give away Phil's money. Come on. <laughs> Come Have on. a great night, guys. I don't ask much. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.